And the government is that we are called to live by faith. Amen. So if we're talking about this wonderful lifestyle of faith, we are called to live by faith. So let's look at these verses here. Verse 16, uh, the Apostle Paul says, For I am not ashamed of the gospel of Christ. I'm not ashamed of it. Hallelujah. I'm not ashamed of it. <clears throat> Why? For it is the power of God unto salvation to everyone that what? Believe. Believe it. So there, there it is. It's believing. To everyone that believes it, it says to the Jew first, and then also to the Greek. And then verse 17, key verse I want to talk about. For therein is the righteousness of God revealed from faith to what? Faith. faith to faith, as it is written. Let's read this. The just shall live by faith. So we're talking about this, this wonderful lifestyle of faith. And so here, this righteousness that we can't earn on our own, this righteousness came by faith. It came by faith. We, we couldn't do enough good works to earn the righteousness of God. We couldn't do enough good works. And so this righteousness that we have is, is because Jesus has purchased it for us. We have his righteousness and we receive it by faith. And so we are called to live by faith. We're called to live a lifestyle of faith. And uh, this faith is talked about springing from faith to faith. And uh, this word just, uh, the righteousness of the just, uh, they, are, they, are, they live by faith. The just are those who are approved by God. They are acceptable to God by faith. And so we're acceptable to God by faith, not by our good works. And notice here he says, the just shall live. If I say live. live. This word live, I looked it up, uh, is the word zeo. And it means uh, to enjoy real life. So the just shall live, in other words, enjoy real life. Uh, it also means to have true life. It also means the blessed endless life in the kingdom of God. So the just shall live this blessed, true, real life by faith. Amen. This is the life that he's called us to live. And so we are called to live by faith. We're called to enjoy real life by faith. We're called to, to have true life, and it comes by faith. This blessed life, it comes by faith. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And this faith that we're talking about is the faith in God in which Jesus is the author of. It's the faith of God in which Jesus is the author of. And so, uh, here it says again, the just shall live by faith. And so, as we look at this, the righteous person continues to live by faith. And, uh, and then here, uh, the first part here says, the righteousness of God should live from faith to faith. So not only does the righteous person continue to live by faith, but the righteous person continues to grow from one level of faith maturity to another level of faith maturity. And so we grow from faith to faith. If I say I'm growing, I'm growing. from faith to faith. faith to faith. So that's the lifestyle of faith. It's growing from faith to faith. In the natural, we realize that in the natural, we don't remain a baby all of our lives. We, we mature. We grow from one level to the next level. And so God has called us to go from faith to faith. One level of faith to the next level of faith. From faith to faith. So we're called to go by faith and continue to, to trust him from one level to the next level of faith. Hallelujah. Everybody say, I'm growing in faith. I'm growing in faith. Now go with me to uh, Mark chapter 9. Mark chapter 9. Mark chapter 9, we start at verse 17. Thank God we're growing from faith to faith. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Growing from faith to faith. Here in Mark chapter 9, the point to bring out here is that we can cry out for help for better believing. Hallelujah. We can cry out for help for better believing. Hallelujah. We can cry out for help for better believing. So here in Mark chapter 9, we're going to start in verse uh, 17. We have several verses. We'll, we'll go through several verses here. Mark 17, and it starts here. And it says, The one of the multitude answered and said, Master, I brought unto thee my son, which hath a dumb spirit. Verse 18. And wheresoever he taketh him, he teareth him. 
he fumbled and gnashed it with his teeth and pined away. And I spake to thy disciples that we should cast him out, and they could not. Verse 19, and he answered him and said, O faithless generation, how long shall I be with you? How long shall I suffer you? Bring him here, bring him unto me. Verse 20, and they brought him unto him, brought him to Jesus. And when he saw him, straightway the spirit carried him, and he fell on the ground and wallowed, foaming. Verse 21, and he, Jesus, asked his father, how long is it ago since this came unto him? And he said, of a child. Verse 22, in all times it hath cast him into the fire and into the water to destroy him. But if thou canst do anything, have compassion on us and help us. Hallelujah. And then verse 23, Jesus said unto him, if thou canst believe, all things are possible to him that what? Believe. Believe it. And then verse 24. <coughs> and straightway the father of the child cried out and said with tears, Lord, I believe. Help thy mind unbelief. Help thy mind unbelief. And then verse 25. When Jesus saw that the people came running together, he rebuked the foul spirit, saying unto him, Thou dumb and deaf spirit, I charge thee, come out of him, and enter no more into him. And the spirit cried and went him sore, and came out of him, and he and he was as one dead, insomuch that many said, He is dead. And we'll keep going up down verse 29. But Jesus took him out of the hand and lifted him up, and he arose. And when he was coming to the house, his disciples asked him privately. Why could, it, why could not we cast him out? And in verse 29, And he, Jesus said unto them, This time can come forth by nothing but by prayer and fasting. And so here we see the point is that if we need help, we can cry out for help for better believing. Oh, we can cry out for help for better believing. Uh, before we talk about this, in Hebrews 11 and 1, Hebrews 11 and 1, and we're going to come back over here to Mark now. Hebrews 11 and 1, they remind us to talk about that. Hebrews 11 and 1 talks about what faith is. Let's read this together. Now faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. And I like to say it, it it's like it's the faith is the evidence, it's the title of these. I like to say it's the receipt that shows that you purchased uh, that balloon, you purchased that inheritance, that it belongs to you. We've been using the example that when you go to some of these stores, uh, they'll ask for your receipt before you walk out. Some of the uh, the stores, they'll, they'll want to see a receipt, making sure that you purchased it. And so the word of God is our receipt that shows that we have purchased what Jesus has paid for, that we, that we have ownership of what Jesus has purchased for us. So back over here in, in Mark 9, uh, we, we see here that we can cry for help for better believing. And notice the situation in, in Mark 9 and verse 17. We see that there, there's this case here in, in Mark 9 and 17 that uh, this child has a dumb spirit in Mark 9 and 17. Uh, not Romans, but Mark chapter 9 and verse 17. And here it says uh, he has, has a dumb spirit. And, and so this word dumb means uh, lacking in, in the ability of speech. Uh, because of de defects. Mm -hmm. It's because of an evil spirit. And uh, as I'm looking at it, a lot of the evil spirits manifest that defect. And so this, this, this child has a dumb, dumb spirit, which means he's not able to speak. And so this demon is manifesting this dumb spirit. Mm -hmm. So it's, this demon is manifesting, and so it's called the dumb spirit because this child is suffering from the inability to speak. And so the demon is connected with that weakness that's being manifested in that child. And then here in verse 18, uh, it, it says that, that it tears him. Uh, and, and so the father talks to him. And so it, it tears him. It, it causes the child to, to uh, convulse and to distort. So the demon is causing this convulsion in this child. And it's hurting, hurting them down. 
And then it goes on to say that, that he pined away. It's like he's, the members of the body are, are withering away. So that's what this, this demonic spirit is doing to this child. It's pining away, it's withering away. And uh, he says here, uh, he says to Jesus, he says, I brought him to your disciples, and I can say students, they brought him to your students, but to cast him out, but they could not. And so, uh, again, we're reminded that Jesus was training his disciples to operate in faith. He's trained them to, uh, to live in faith. And, uh, and so he says in, in verse 19, he says, O oh, faithless generation. This word faithless means uh, generation that's without trust. They, they're, they're lacking trust. And then he goes on to say, how long will I suffer with you? And we talked about, it's like Jesus has his three-year training program. He doesn't have a lot of time to teach them because he's moving on to the crucifixion. And so they've got to learn the lesson. And so he says, how long shall I suffer you? Bring him here to me. Bring him here to me. So he's training his disciples uh, into operating in faith. And if you go down to verse 21, Jesus is getting more information about this, uh, about this, uh, this situation, about this child. And he says, he asked the father, how long uh, ago has, has it been since this came into him? And he said, since a child. In other words, from his childhood, this is when this happened to him. And then verse 23, he says, uh, he says, if you can believe, all things are possible to him that what? That believe it. And so Jesus is telling them that, that it's possible for your child to be delivered. I brought, uh, you brought him to my disciples. They couldn't do it. But all things are possible to him that believe it. Mm -hmm. it it's possible to him that believe it. And this word believe it means to trust in Jesus to be able, able to aid or to assist in obtaining or doing something. And so they're saying, he's saying that all things are possible to him that believe. If you can believe that I'm able to do something for you, if you can believe that I'm able to obtain something for you, then all things are possible. <clears throat> and so notice here again, uh, the word believe is in this verse twice. And so believing is, is so important. Yes, is. And so in order to live out this wonderful lifestyle of faith, we've got to exercise continuous believing. It's a lifestyle. And so he says here twice, if thou can believe all things are possible to him that believes. All things are possible to him that believes. And so he says here <coughs> that all things are possible. And so all things are possible, let me, let me clarify that, that all things are possible does not mean everything that's wrong is possible. Everything that's foolish is possible. Uh -huh. It's all things that's possible to him that believes in, in the faith to God to obtain it. God is not going to obtain something wrong for us. That's right. that's God is not going to work with us to obtain something foolish for us. Right. All things are possible to him that believes. Right. And so he says in verse 24, in verse 24, he says, I believe, in, in Mark 9, 24, I believe. And then he says, help thou my unbelief. This word help means to bring assistance, to bring aid. Help thou my unbelief. Relieve my unbelief. Help my unbelief. Help me in, in my lack of faith. Help me in my weakness of faith. And so one of the things that we learn in the lifestyle of faith is that our, our faith is developed. It's growing. As we just said, it's growing. And we saw here in Romans, it's maturing. And so he, he says, help thou my unbelief. I want to believe. I want to believe to where we can get this manifestation. And so he says, help thou my unbelief. Help me in my weakness of faith. Help me in my inadequacy. In the area where I'm deficient in. Lord, help me. And so in our faith training, it's okay to go to the Lord for help. We're still developing. We're still growing. We're still, if you will, in, in the class of faith, in the classroom of faith. Amen. We're still in faith training. Yes, and so he said, in this case that he had, of course he wanted his child to be free. In this case, and he brought him to the disciples, he comes to Jesus and says, if you can do anything, help me, help me, help, help my child, help us out. Amen. And Jesus says, 
if you can believe all things are possible, then he said, help my unbelief. And so in our faith training, it's okay to get help. In our faith training, we may need help. We may need assistance to get those deliverances, to get that freedom, to get that healing, to get whatever that, that is that we need. Yes, Our faith muscle, if you will, is still being uh, strengthened. It's still growing. It's still being developed. Hallelujah. And so he was honest enough to say, Lord, I believe, but help thou my unbelief. Help thou my unbelief. And so again, the point we're bringing out here is that we can cry out for help for better believing. He had a level of believing, but he wanted to believe better. Yes. He wanted to believe to the point where he get his child delivered. Yes. And so he said, help thou my unbelief. Help me to believe better. Everybody say, help me to believe better. Help me to believe better. So that I can see the manifestation in my life. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And so in this lifestyle of faith, we're continuing to grow. We're continuing to train. We're continuing to develop. And we just said in Romans 1, we go from faith to faith. We want our faith to get better and better and better and better. We're in a classroom of faith here on the earth. Yes. We're still learning. We're still developing faith. Yes, sir. And our Lord is right with us by the power of the Holy Spirit, walking alongside of us to train us in faith development. Mm -hmm. Hallelujah. To help us in our faith. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Now let's go further. Go with me to 2 Thessalonians chapter 1. 2 Thessalonians chapter 1, and we're going to look at verse 3. 2 Thessalonians chapter 1, and we're going to look at verse 3. The point we're bring out here as we go here is, is that we should thank Father God that our faith is growing continuously by exercising. Thank Father God that our faith is growing continuously by exercising. Our faith is growing continuously by exercising. So notice what he says here in 2 Thessalonians chapter 1, and we're going to look at verse 3. Notice he says, we are bound to thank God always for you, brother. We're bound to thank God. If I say thank God. Amen. He says, I'm bound to thank God always for you, brother, as it is me, because, because that your faith, what? Groweth how? Exceedingly. And the charity of every one of you every one of you all, toward each other, abounded. Hallelujah. And so he is, he is saying here, the apostle is saying, thank Father God that our faith is growing continuously, or here it says growing exceedingly by exercising. And this word faith here is talking about faith in God in which Jesus is the author. And so uh, this faith, and also this word faith means fidelity or constancy. So uh, your faith or your constancy in faith is growing exceedingly. Hallelujah. And this word growing exceedingly means to increase above an ordinary degree. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And it's this Greek word, huporthania, huporthania. And so it means to uh, increase above an ordinary degree, an ordinary degree. And so our faith is growing beyond an ordinary degree. To increase beyond measure. And so even by faith, we can thank God on a regular basis that our faith is growing beyond measure. Amen. We can thank God that our, our faith is growing beyond an ordinary degree. Yeah. Romans 1 and 1 says we're going from faith to faith. And so we can establish in our heart that our faith is growing. Everybody say, my faith is growing. Faith is growing. It's growing exceedingly. It's growing exceedingly. Hallelujah. And so uh, it, it's growing. This word growing exceedingly has to do with, with, with tremendous growth. And so we can, we can, we can declare over ourselves that our faith is, is growing tremendously. Mm -hmm. that, that we're serious about our faith. Amen. We're not playing around with our faith. That our faith is growing seriously. We're working our faith Hallelujah. on a daily basis. And, and one of the things that we do as a family, we speak over our day. We make declarations over our day. We're, we're releasing our faith. We're taking our faith seriously. Amen. We're not going to give the enemy a chance to take over. We're going to, we're going to take advantage. We're going to speak over our day. We're yeah. blessed. We look at uh, Deuteronomy 28. That we're blessed going in. We're blessed coming out. Yeah. We're blessed wherever we go. Amen. We speak the words of faith over our day. Yeah. 
And so here he's saying we can thank God that our faith is growing and feeling. And so we want to get on the road, if you will, of faith development. We want to travel the road where we're increasing our faith from one level of faith to the next level of faith. And like here it says, your faith is growing and feeling. And we can do that corporately, and that can be a corporate confession, that our faith is going exceedingly. The Apostle Paul was saying to the Thessalonians that your faith, your faith is growing exceedingly. Yeah. And then look at verse 4. And we'll come back here in verse 4. Your faith is growing exceedingly. It says, so that we ourselves glory in you in the churches of God for your patience and faith in all your persecutions and tribulations that ye endure. So your faith is growing exceedingly, and you're you're not folding under tribulations. You're not folding under persecution. Your faith is growing strong, glory to God. And so again, we can speak over ourselves, go back to verse 3, that our faith is growing. If I say our faith is growing. Faith is growing. Now it doesn't say your faith is growing, but then also it says charity. And we're going to look at this in another translation. Uh, that the love, the word charity is love. That the love is growing. The love abounding. So my faith is growing and my love is abounding. My faith is growing and my love is abounding. So those are declarations I can speak over myself. My faith is growing and my love is abounding. Look at this with me in verse 3 in the Passion Translation. 2 Thessalonians 1 and verse 3 in the Passion Translation. And then we'll go to the New Living. Here in, in the Passion it says, we feel a, a personal responsibility to continually be thanking God for you, our spiritual family. This is our spiritual family here. He says, thank God for you, our spiritual family, every time we pray. And we have every reason to do so because your faith is growing marvelously beyond measure. That's what he said faith is. It's growing marvelously beyond measure. It's growing beyond the ordinary. Your faith is growing Marvelous and beyond measure. Then it says, the unselfish love each of you share for one another is increasing and what? Overflowing. So my faith is growing and my love is overflowing. My faith is growing and my love is overflowing. Look at this in the New Living Translation. Here in the New Living Translation, verse 3 again, it says, Dear brothers and sisters, we can't help but thank God for you. We can't help but thank God for you. Because your faith is what? Flourishing. Everybody say, my faith is flourishing. My faith is flourishing. And then it says, your love for one another is growing. Hallelujah. Say, my faith is flourishing. My faith is flourishing. My love is growing. My love is growing. Hallelujah. And so he says, I can't help but thank God. And so we want to continue to thank God that our faith is growing and that our, that our faith is flourishing, that our, that our love is growing. I had a song chant that came to me this, uh, this morning. When I, when I lived in Texas, we were working with the youth ministry, and we had these words, faith and love, and, and it was a chant that we said, we walked around our church property, and we just sang and we repeated that we're walking in faith and love, walking in faith and love, glory to God, glory to God, walking in my Jesus name. So we walked around, and we just said that, we went around the building, I'm not sure we went around several times or whatever, but we just, I think it was right around the time we moved into that building, and this song chant came to me. It may have come from this verse, I'm not for sure, but faith and love. But it's talking about I'm walking in faith and love. I'm walking in faith and love. Glory to God. Glory to God. I'm walking in Jesus' name. Repeat it after me. I'm walking in faith and love. 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 Glory to God. Glory to God. I'm walking in Jesus' name. I'm walking in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. So we're walking in faith. And we're walking in love. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Walking in faith and walking in love. Now go with me to Mark chapter 11. A familiar passage. Mark chapter 11. Talking about living uh, this wonderful lifestyle of faith. Mark chapter 11. We're going to start at verse 12 in the King James Mark 11. And verse 12. And here it says, And on the morrow when they were come to Bethany, he was hungry. And the point we're going to bring out as we go further, we're going to go down to verse 22, is that Jesus took many opportunities to train about exercising faith. He took many opportunities to train about exercising faith. And so he sees this, this fig tree. And then here in verse 13, 
It says, and seeing a fig tree afar off, having leaves, he came if happily he might find anything thereon. And when he came to it, he found nothing but leaves, for the time of fig was not yet. And then verse 14. In verse 14, and Jesus answered and said unto him, No man eat fruit of thee hereafter forever. And his disciples heard it. And then we skip down to verse 20. So hear what he said. Then down to verse 20. And in the morning, as they passed by, they saw the fig tree, what? Dried up from the roots. And then we'll keep going down to verse 24. Verse 21. And Peter calling to remember said unto him, Master, the fig tree which thou cursed is withered away. In verse 22, and Jesus answered and said unto him, What? Have faith in God. And in verse 23, let's read it together. For verily I say unto you, that whosoever shall say unto this mountain, Be thou removed, and be thou cast into the sea, and shall not doubt in his heart, but shall believe that those things which he said shall come to pass, he shall have whatsoever he said. And in verse 24, let's read that. Therefore I say unto you, what things soever ye desire, when ye pray, believe that ye receive them, and ye shall have them. Glory to God. Hallelujah. And so Jesus is looking, speaks to this fig tree. Back to a verse 12, I believe. And he takes this opportunity to teach or to train about exercising faith. <clears throat> and I'll say this, he's teaching them to, to train, he's training them about exercising faith. And so I have this, is that this world is the training school to develop faith. This world is the training school, our training school to develop faith. Why? Because in heaven, we won't really need faith because everything will be manifest. Yeah. And so this world this. is our training ground, or we can say like this, our training school for developing faith. So if we think about school, what kind of grade are we making in faith? But again, just like in school, there's a teacher to help us. Jesus can help us, the Holy Spirit can help us to develop our faith. He can help us to live out the lifestyle of faith. And so this world is the training ground or the training school to develop our faith. And so here in verse, uh, let's go to verse, he's home in verse 12. And then in verse 13, he, he looks at these leaves. Uh, this, this, this word leaves, it, it's the foliage, it's, it's the greenage, it's the vegetation that's there on the, uh, on the tree, that's on this fig tree, and it should have been uh, ripe. But there's nothing on it. There's no figs on it. And so then we see that Jesus spoke a curse on it. And uh, he said, no man shall eat fruit hereafter, uh, hereafter forever. And the disciples heard it. And if we go down to verse 21, we see that Jesus is actually speaking a curse over it. And so uh, it says here, Master, the fig tree which thou cursed is withered away. It's, it's cursed. It's, it's, it's a pronounced a, opposed to blessing. It's an opposed to blessing. And so an evil, if you will, is pronounced on it. Or we can say it like this, if blessing is, if the shelter of blessing is taken off, then evil comes in, in this world. And so the curse came on it. And so one of the points I want to bring out here is that I want to submit that mostly everything that we walk in and operate in, it should be blessing us or should be a blessing to us. And so this tree was to be a blessing. It was a feed. But it didn't do, didn't do what it was designed to do. And so everything that we walk around, and so as we talk about living the lifestyle of faith, everything that we walk around, we should be blessing it. Yeah. Blessing our car. Yeah. Blessing our home. Yeah. Blessing our job. Yeah. Everything that we're, that we're connected to should be blessed, and we should be speaking the words of faith over it as a lifestyle. Amen. When we get up in the morning, we can declare we're blessed. We can declare, my mind is blessed. Yeah. My body is blessed. Yeah. So this is a lifestyle of faith. We've got to push with the force of faith, speaking faith-filled words, if you will, Amen. over our day. Speaking blessing words over our day. Amen. We want everything to be blessed. Yeah. We want our finances to be blessed. 
blessed. Amen. We want to speak over our finances. We want to speak words of faith over everything that's connected to us. Everything that's connected to us that be blessed. In other words, when we talk about blessed, we're talking about that it be fruitful. Yeah. And that's what the tree was supposed to be fruitful. And so we can speak to things. And that's what Jesus is teaching here. He spoke to this fig tree. He spoke to this thing. We can speak to things. And notice that thing responded. The next day they went back and they saw that the tree was withered away. He spoke the word. And then the next day we see the results of it. So we can speak the word, words of faith as a lifestyle, and see the results. And so we are empowered, and Jesus is teaching them, we are empowered to speak to things. And so we see here, uh, as we go down to verse uh, 22, he, he uses this object to teach them a lesson. He says, first of all, have faith in who? Yeah. Have faith in God. And then notice what he goes on to say in verse 23. He says, for verily I say to you, truly I say to you, that whosoever shall say to this mountain, this word uh, mountain is, is, is talking about a, a, a difficult situation. Uh, it's, it's talking about something uh, that, that's challenging, something that, that's remarkable, something that's unthinkable. Whoever says to this mountain, be thou removed and be thou cast into the sea. And so this word mountain means uh, hindrances. It means, it's talking about hindrances and, 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 and the things that we can target. Speak to this mountain. <clears throat> Speak to that specific mountain. Target that situation. And so, uh, with God-given faith, I read that we can face a mountain of impossibility and see that mountain moved by God's power. Amen. So here he says, be thou removed, in other words, be taken up from your place. And then it says, be cast into the sea to be thrown out with force, with or without, a pur with, with or without force, with a purpose, be thrown out into the sea. And then he goes on and says, and shall not die, shall not die not doubt. This word doubt means to hesitate, to be uncertain. So faith, a, a lifestyle of faith is a lifestyle of trusting God, a lifestyle of trusting Jesus. It's a lifestyle of, of conviction. He says, shall not doubt. And so if we're following Jesus, the trainer in faith, he's teaching us not to doubt. He's saying, don't doubt, but believe. He's saying, trust in him. And so it says, shall not doubt, shall not doubt where in his what? In his heart, shall not doubt in his heart. And this, this heart is, is the center, it's the, it's the seat of all physical and spiritual life. So don't doubt in your heart. And this center part of your being, don't doubt in your heart. Now I remember Brother Higgins saying, you may, have a, you may have a doubt in your head, but not in your heart. Your head may give you trouble. Your head may think, how can you figure it out? But out of our spirit, faith flows out of our spirit, man. And then we have faith in our heart, out of our spirit, the center of our being. Then he said, uh, you believe those things which you say. This word believe means to absolutely trust God, that he's able to obtain it. So believe that God can actually do it, trust in God that he'll actually do it, that you can actually obtain it, by believing in God, that he can actually do it, trust in him, then he says, you'll have what you say. This word say it means uh, speaking to it. Uh, it means a conviction. So you'll have that conviction, those, that thing that you, that you speak out. And so it's not just words that we say. So when we talk about faith, it's not just religious words. It's got to be words that have conviction with them. It's got to be words that we believe. We've got to say it with our mouth, and we've got to believe it in our heart. We've got to trust God that what we're saying, we believe it. Yes. We've got to believe our words. Right. So many people, if we realize the, the, the value of words and the weight that our words have, we would be a lot more careful about the words that we say. Mm -hmm. So many people speak careless words. And, and even some cliches and things like that, but our words hold weight. Yes. And that's what he's telling us here. Our words of faith hold weight. And Jesus is training us to come up to live a lifestyle of faith. To use your words and to use your faith. Believe and speak over every situation that's connected to you. Not only for yourself, but use your faith to benefit others. Yes. 
And so he goes on to say, you have what you say. Then in verse 24, oh, it says, it shall come to pass. This word, come to pass, back in verse 23, uh, you believe uh, that, it, that it shall come to pass. This word, come to pass, means that, that the request will be done, that it will be executed. So that's what we're believing. We're believing what we say shall be done. We're believing what we speak will be executed. The request will be performed. It's not just empty words. We will really believe that it will be accomplished, that it will be implemented. And uh, another way to say it is that we believe it should come to pass. We believe that what we say will be enforced. Yes. Heaven will enforce what we speak, what we're speaking. Heaven will back up what we're speaking. So if we believe what we're speaking will be enforced, then it says you shall have whatsoever he says. So we've got to believe that what we'll that what we speak will happen, that it will be enforced, then we'll have whatsoever we say. And then here in verse 24, he goes on to say, Therefore I say to you, what things whoever ye desire. This word desire means what you request for yourself, what you ask for yourself, what you desire, what you require, what you desire for yourself. He says, when you pray, believe that ye receive. This word receive means that you take it, that you grasp it. Believe that you receive it. In other words, believe that you have it. Believe that you've gained it. Then you shall have it. Then it says you shall have it. So we've got to believe that we're receiving. We've got to believe it in the present tense. So when we pray, we believe right at the moment that we pray. So faith is now. We saw in Hebrews 11 and 1. Now faith is the substance. So faith is now. We've got to believe that, that it is done when? Yeah. Now. We've got to believe that it's done when? Yeah. Now. So here he says, believe. This is Jesus teaching his disciples. He's training them in faith. He says, what things will you desire? When you pray, believe that you receive it. Receive them. Believe now that you receive it. And ye shall have it. Believe now that you receive it. So we've got to believe that it's fulfilled. Now, the other piece of it, believe that we receive, so our faith is now, but the manifestation may take a while. The, man, the full manifestation may not come immediately. It may take a while for it to fully manifest, but we believe that we receive it now. In other words, we believe that it's done. Yes. And so now, we can say, if you will, the angels are going to work it to bring it to manifestation. Hallelujah. Whether it's connection with an individual for a blessing, or if you're going to the hospital with the doctor, if you're in the hospital with the doctor, whatever the situation is, we believe we receive it. We believe that it's done. If I say I believe that it's done. And so, and so we talked about earlier, uh, a few weeks ago, a couple weeks ago, about as God sees the end, and he declares the end from the beginning out of Isaiah. So we want to speak the end result from the beginning. So here, believe that you receive it. And then it says that you shall have it. And so we believe that it's granted. God has granted the request. But then the manifestation is on the way. I'm thinking about sometimes when you go to a courtroom and that judge gives, puts that gavel down and gives that decree and says to the, uh, to the, uh, to the other opponent uh, that you're going to pay them you know, X amount of dollars, a million dollars. Well, then that process is on the way. You may not get the million dollars right there in the courtroom, but it's been decreed by that judge. Yes. And so it is obligated to manifest. Yes. Yes. It's obligated to manifest. And so we believe we receive it, and then it says, and ye shall what? Have it. Have it. We should believe that we receive it, and then we shall have it. And so faith is imparted into the believer's heart, and we release it by speaking. Hallelujah. We speak it out, and God brings it to pass. Glory to God. Let's go to one more verse as we wrap up. Uh, this may be the last one, maybe one more. We're going to be to Ephesians chapter 6. Ephesians chapter 6, as we were uh, discussing with our brother. It's good to have uh, faith fellowship, faith friends to share the word of God with. Yeah. And as we're sharing a couple weeks ago, this scripture came to me out of uh, Ephesians chapter 6. And we're going to start at verse 10. And the point we bring out here, again, as we fellowship in, uh, around the word, is that faith is a weapon to overcome the enemy. Amen. Faith is a weapon to overcome the enemy. 
And so here in Ephesians 6 and verse 10, let's read this together. Finally, my brethren, be what? Strong in the Lord and in the what? power of his might. Uh, verse 11. Put on the whole armor of God that you may be able to stand against the wild of the devil. Let's keep going down to verse 16. For we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness in high places. Wherefore, take unto you the whole arm of God, that you may be able to withstand an evil day, and having done all to stand. Stand, therefore, having your loins girded about with truth, and having on the breastplate of righteousness, and your feet shod with the preparation of the gospel of peace. Verse 16. Above all, taking the shield of what? Faith. Wherewith ye shall be able to quit what? All the fiery darts of the wicked. Hallelujah. Take the shield of faith. And so here, faith is a weapon that we can use to overcome the enemy. Amen. Faith is a weapon. So we're talking about living this lifestyle of faith. Uh, we, we have this weapon of faith. Yes. But back in verse 10, he says, be strong in the Lord. Yes. Be strong. This word strong means to be empowered, to be enabled, to be reinforced by the Lord. And then notice here, in the power of his might, in, in his strength, in his ability. So our strength is not from ourselves. Our strength is from God. Be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. So as we have challenges, we don't have to fight in our own strength. We can fight in the power of his might. Hallelujah. We can fight in the power of his might. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. His might is his ability that he supplies. He, he provides, he imparts to us the might that we need. That we need. And then he goes on in verse 11. He says, as we put a fight, be strong in the Lord. He says, put on the whole arm of God. This word putting on is like slipping into a garment. Yes. Slipping into a garment. Slipping into clothing. And so it says put on the whole arm. This word whole is, is the full arm. Put on the full arm of who? Okay. Of God. So we see in verse 10, God's power and God's might. Now we're talking about God's armor. Oh, putting on God's armor. And uh, this full armor is talking about the complete armor of God. And then he says, when you put on this armor, why? That you may be able to stand. If I say stand. Yeah. And as we were reading, you kept, you kept seeing the word stand, withstand, stand, and stand, and stand. So it's telling me that God wants us to stand. He wants us to stand. We can stand. How can we stand? In faith and trusting God. Yeah. Hallelujah. So he said, stand and put on this complete armor of God that you may be able to stand. This word stand. It, it means to, to where a fighter holds his position. They're standing, they're holding their position against the enemy. And then here he said that we can stand against the wiles. This word wiles means, means the, the deceit, the trickery. So we're in spiritual conflict. Stand against the wiles, the trickery of the devil. And this word wiles, uh, the Greek word is this word methodia. And I see the word method. And so the enemy has different methods that he uses to try to come against us. Yes. Here he says, we can stand against the wiles, the tricks yes. of the devil. Yes. And we said, we said the other day that, that, that the devil is the one who perse persecutes good men. He comes and inflicts mankind. He comes to entice men to sin. And uh, he, we said that, he, that he's nasty. We use that word, he, he's vicious. Stand against the wiles of the devil. He's a vicious enemy. Mm -hmm. Stands against the wiles of the devil. He's an enemy against God and against Jesus. And so the, the, the enemy has methods. The wiles is a method. He has methods and tricks and schemes. And some of the methods, as I was reading, some of the methods I saw, was like, like he can bring division in the church. Right. That's one of his methods. Right. Yeah. That's one of his strategies. Yeah. He can bring division in the church, division yeah. in families. Yeah. He can bring temptation to sin. Mm -hmm. That's one of his methods. That's one of his strategies. He can bring fear upon people. Yeah. Make things look worse than what they really are. Yeah. He can bring spiritual apathy where people, they, 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 they become lax in the things of God. Spiritually, they're not pressing on 
like you said, the devil day about hungering for more. They're not pressing on for more. And then also the enemy, one of the strategies is the unwillingness to forgive. Where people hold on to an offense and hold on to it for years. And then they put themselves in bondage. And so those are some of his strategies. So we got to put on the whole armor to stand against the wiles, the tricks of the devil. And so again, we're engaged in, in conflict. And I read that this conflict is called the warfare of faith. The warfare of faith. The warfare of faith. Now you skip down to verse uh, 13. Again, we see in verse 13, he says, Take unto you the whole arm of God, that you may be able to withstand in the evil day, and having done all, to stand. And this word, stand, means uh, where, where you hold your ground. The enemy's trying to get you off ground, but you, you hold your ground. And so again, we see the word stand, we stand repeated, and so the Father wants us to stand. And if we skip down to verse 16, and he goes through all this list of armor, talk about the, uh, the heaven of salvation, all these, these different things, going to about the truth. But we're focusing in on faith, and here it says in verse 16, above all, above all, taking the shield of faith. Above all, this word above means to that which is added to, is in addition to, over and above. In other words, in addition to all the other parts, above all, Take the shield of faith. Above all these other things, all these other uh, uh, armors, armaments, they're all important. He says, above all, in addition to all those things, take the shield of faith. And this word, take, it means, it means to, to grip in order to carry it and to use it. And so we take our faith in order to use it. As we talk about living the lifestyle of faith, we, we take our faith to use it. It's not just something that we just carry around and we just hold on to. Our faith is something we're supposed to be using. These, these weapons are to be used in warfare. We're in conflict. And so he's given us, God, this is the armor of God, he's given us this, this, this armor for us to use it. And so he says, take the shield of faith, we're taking it in order to use it. And so again, we speak our words of faith over our day. We speak faith declarations. We speak health, we speak healing, we speak victory. We speak the words of faith. And so above all, taking the shield of faith. We need to use our faith. Everybody say, use your faith. Use your faith. That's the lifestyle. It, it, it's to be used. Yes. Amen. We need to be speaking faith. And that's how we go from faith to faith when we exercise our faith. Yes. So we need to use our faith, taking the shield of faith. Uh, and then notice here, wherewith ye shall be able to quench. This word quench means to extinguish. We'll be able to quench all the fiery darts. Not some, but what? All, all the fiery darts. So our shield of faith enables us to quench, to extinguish all the fiery darts. These fiery darts, this word darts means missiles, uh, it means uh, spear, it means uh, arrows. So all the things that the enemy is trying to throw at us. We use the shield of faith to quench every dart that he tries to throw against our lives. Amen. Even, uh, even we say, uh, I begin to say, if, 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 if something starts happening, like accidents, I say, no incidents, no accidents. No incidents, no accidents. I don't want incidents. I don't want accidents. I don't want to be dealing with incidents. I don't want to be dealing with accidents. I don't want car accidents. So I begin to speak my faith. No incidents and no accidents. If something starts, I start slipping, I, I take authority over it. No incidents, no accidents. I take authority and I quench all the fire regards of the wicked. I don't know what plan, what 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 wiles he had, what method he had to try to take me down. And so I speak, and I use my shield of faith, and I speak over those situations. I speak what I want to happen. I declare the end result. I declare the promise of God. I declare the blessings of God. We release our faith. That's the part of our lifestyle. We speak the words of faith. So he says, with the shield of faith, we'll be able to quench all the fiery darts of the devil. Now he says, taking it, in other words, using it. So if we don't use the shield of faith, we'll not be able to quench all the fiery darts of the wicked. And the enemy will have a foothold. But if we'll use the shield of faith, again, these tools are to be used. If we'll use the shield of faith, we'll be able to quench the fiery darts of the wicked. Hallelujah. Glory to God. 
And so that's where our strength comes. It comes from God, and we put our faith in Him, and we use the shield of faith to quench all the fiery darts of the wicked. Glory to God. Hallelujah. We're wrapping up there. Everybody say, thank God for faith. Thank God for faith. I'm walking by faith. I'm walking by faith. I'm living by faith. I'm living by faith. Giving glory to God. Glory to God. Let's take a moment to stand and just uh, take a moment to meditate on this. Father, we just thank you. We thank you for faith you've given us. We thank you that you called us to live a lifestyle of faith, to live by faith. We saw in your word that the just shall live by faith. You called us to live by faith. We're in your family. So you called your children to live by faith. You want us to operate in faith. You want us to speak words of faith and, and declare like Jesus did. He went around speaking your words. He went around declaring words of faith. And we are in your family. We're, we're your students. And we want to continue to grow and speak the words of faith over every situation in our lives and use our faith to be a blessing to us. We thank you for faith, Father. We bless you. We thank you for your faith that you've given us to be victorious, to quench all the fiery darts of the wicked one. We thank you, Father. We will walk in victory over, this, uh, over the enemy's work and over his plans. But we thank you that you've given us faith here in this world. In this world, this is our training ground for faith. We're going to need faith in heaven because everything is fully manifested. But here on the earth, we're, we're in a classroom of faith. So help us to continue to develop our faith, to build our faith, to use our faith to be a blessing. Uh, to bring healing, to bring deliverance, to, uh, to bring uh, breakthroughs on, on behalf of your people. Father, we thank you for it. We pray even for those who have not even made the uh, first step of putting their faith and trust in Jesus. We pray, Father, we pray for them, we pray for them, that they'll make that declaration of faith, that they'll put their trust in the only wise God, our Savior, that they'll put their trust in Jesus, they'll say yes to Jesus, and they commit it and say, yes, I believe in Jesus. And I receive him into my life. And the word says in Romans 10, 9 to 10, who shall confess with their mouth and believe in their heart, believe in their heart, that God raised Jesus from the dead, shall be saved. Father, we thank you that they'll come to the faith and believe with, a, with their heart. Man, believe in the righteousness and with the mouth of confession is made unto salvation. So we thank you, Father, that they'll, they'll believe and they'll make that confession of faith that Jesus is the Lord and Savior in their lives to you. Not only from that, that first step, but that become students of your word, students of faith, students of Jesus, continue to grow in your word and grow from faith to faith. And then also become committed to a local church. When I sit under a pastor who will in the word, you have to build their lives and take their lives to the level that God has. We thank you for it. Again, we thank you for all here today. We thank you for the faith that you've given us, that we'll continue to exercise our faith, and we'll see greater and greater breakthroughs. We'll see manifestations of our faith. In Jesus' name, we thank you for it. Amen. Amen. Praise God. You may be seated. Give God a hand of praise as you're taking your seat. <laughs> Lord, Lord, Lord. <laughs> and, uh, we have an opportunity to, uh, to give tonight. It's for our uh, offering. If you need an envelope, if you raise your hand, the usher will give you an envelope. Or you can text give to 855. 720-0743. Again, you can text GIVE to 855-720-0743. Text GIVE to 855-720-0743. Amen. Simple five ways to, uh, to GIVE and uh, get seed into the ground. Thank God for the, the honor and the privilege of being able to GIVE and support His work. Amen. We want this, this ministry to be a tool in God's hand that he'll use to change lives that bring them from darkness into the marvelous light. We will continue to spread the word and believe it for growth that will increase, uh, believe it for, for members that will plug in, those who call to be a part of this house or call here in the harvest of souls. Amen. As we declare from north, south, east, and west. Amen. We're calling them in and believe in God that uh, he's, he's orchestrating their steps, orchestrating their path, and leading them to this ministry, to be a part of this work. So that they can grow and be fed to be all that God has called them to be. So thank you as you give and help us to support this work, seeing God do great and mighty things. Amen. Amen. We're going to stand, we're going to slow and go. And uh, we just 
bit so can you maybe share something uh, which you see uh, with the with the neighbor before you leave uh, can you get the words in my mouth and meditation of my heart meditation of my heart be acceptable be acceptable in your sight in your sight oh lord oh lord my strength my strength and my redeemer i'm living i'm living the lifestyle of faith the lifestyle of faith that you are dismissed may so and go